Hey guys, it's Bub here, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at if cloud computing is the future. If you don't know, there are many services out there that can give you a cloud computer. One example of that is Windows 365, which is Microsoft's own cloud-based computing system that allows you to access a computer from virtually anywhere. There's many other services, as I mentioned. However, today, we're taking a look at V2 Cloud. Big shout out to V2 Cloud for making this video possible as they have provided the account with no paywalls. More information at the end on V2 Cloud. So in this video, we'll be taking a look at V2 Cloud as well as the possibility of cloud computing becoming the future of computers. Why would we need to buy $1,000 machines when we can simply buy something like a Chromebook and remote into a powerful cloud computer? In this video, we're going to look at all of that. This is the main page of V2 Cloud. Right off the bat, it looks pretty basic, but it is very feature-packed. I mean, we have AD connectors as well. So we're going to go ahead and create a new computer. And what I like is it automatically pings all of their server locations to detect which one is your strongest. Of course, mine is Washington, D.C. And so in this video, we're taking a look at two different types. In this video, I want to take a look at a basic individual cloud desktop, which runs Windows 10. And then I want to take a look at a business team cloud, which is Windows Server, I think, 2022. So let's start off with an individual cloud desktop. We're going to go ahead and select the highest tier that they have. So I'm choosing this because most people who are going to choose a cloud desktop mostly need power. Most people are going to do video editing, and of course, I don't know if you'd want to do that on a cloud desktop. So these are base images here. For Team Cloud, we can get 11 multi-user or 10 multi-user, or for individual, we get Windows 10, bring your own license. We then get the option to have a private IP or a public IP. Just for this video, we're going to do private and then a local admin password. And here we are. This is our final cloud computer configuration um, with Windows 10 Bringer and License, which is their $240 a month. That's a lot of money per month for a cloud computer. Is having access to your computer all the time in the cloud worth it? I'm not sure about that. So this is going to take a while to actually build the computer because it is basically restoring from a brand new image. So we're going to go ahead and create our second business Windows Server computer. So again, we're going to go business, team cloud, and we're going to go with the $90 one. This is going to be basic business applications, Photoshop design, and things like that. We don't need the $360 one. So let's go next up. And here, we're just going to pick Windows Server 2022 because 2019 and 2016 are older. And that's it. This one is $90 a month, and it's multi-user on server 2022. So we're going to go ahead and create that cloud computer. And now, here is, here's both of our cloud computers. And when you create a business account, or a business computer rather, it says, okay, we're going to help you set up an infrastructure, migrate data, blah, 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 which is actually pretty cool. However, because this is a test, we're not going to look at that. So while these computers actually build, let's just take a look around V2 Cloud. So under users, it looks like yes. So I'm not entirely sure how this works. Um, these are just users that I guess can access V2 Cloud. Um, we can edit the user password, blah, 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 blah. Um, what I find interesting is AD connectors. So you do have the option to join the computer to a domain or an Azure domain. Um, you see traditional Windows Server AD. Not entirely sure how that works. Um, yeah, here we go. We can either do an Azure Active Directory or an AD Domain Services, which is Active Directory Domain Services. No, sh no I have no clue how this is going to link to like, let's say you have a server on your local network. Is it possible to link the cloud PC to that local server? I don't think so, unless you set up a VPN in the actual machine but I'm not entirely sure how that works, but that is pretty cool that they offer that, um, especially with Azure where everything is moving to the cloud, like the purpose of this video, that that could be something in the future to take a look at. Single sign-on connectors, um, looks like we can sign up with Azure, Google, basically any of these things. Um, not entirely sure how this works. And of course, these are just your standard billing options, so like cards, subscriptions, your computers are going to show up here. Um, invoices, anything like that. So I did want to take a look at the desktop app. Ah, here it is. So it does look like we can install this virtually anywhere. 
Windows, Mac, Linux, Raspberry Pi, mobile app for Android or iPad and iPhone. So they are very well versed in the software field. So we're just going to go ahead and install V2 Cloud for Windows because I'm sure that it is going to be way better than connecting in your standard Chromium web browser. Alright, so our Windows 10 machine is up and running, so we are going to go ahead and open it in our desktop application. And okay, so it is asking us if we want to allow access in the Defender Firewall. And I guess we can just click connect. And what was weird was it was connecting to localhost 127.0.0.1. I'm not sure how that works, but here we are. So this is our V2 Cloud Windows 10 VM, which is connected over RDP. Now, I am interested in the specs because it didn't really give us the specs when we created this machine. It only gave us, like, the name. And judging by the fact that this is the 98 CPU usage, yeah, this isn't looking very good. But remember, this is the $240 a month tier. So let's see what we got. So we have an AMD Epic 7371 with 32 gigs of RAM, but a 50 gigabyte hard drive. I would much rather have had an SSD, but okay. So it does look like this can access our C drive. It can access all the drives on our machine. That's actually pretty cool. I just wanna see, we're not gonna do like a full Adobe, we're not gonna do like a full Adobe test. We're just gonna see, can it play YouTube videos? Is media consumption decent with this OS? So we're gonna turn remote audio all the way up and I know that the video isn't capturing remote audio, I don't think, but let's just see if it can play this. The quality defaults to 720p. Um, and I know this video is in 1080, so we're going to turn that up. Um, the audio comes through very smooth. Okay, so this video is actually pretty responsive. I'm really surprised at how this is working. I mean, this is pretty responsive, I would say. My only complaint with this tier is the file exp or not the file explorer, the amount of space we have, and the fact that it's a hard drive and not an SSD. That's my only complaint, but besides that, I mean, this seems like a very usable machine that we have full rights to. So, yeah, I can see this being used. But now, it's time that we sign out and we take a look at our freshly created Windows Server 2022 virtual machine, which could be a different story. So that is our test PC2 that we're going to go ahead and connect to. Uh, same IP address for some reason. And here we go. So again, this is, I think we picked the mid-tier for the Windows Server 2022 machine. Um, so again, let's take a look at what we've got. We have a Xeon E2288G with 8 gigs of RAM and a 50 gigabyte hard drive. So, of course, less than the $240 a month. But this is still Windows Server 2022. Is it activated? I do believe that this is activated. Wow. Yeah, so this is more for multi-user um, or setting up a server. I don't know why you need a server in a cloud environment, though. Um, multi-user under one plan, um, which could also restrict, you know, that 8 gigabytes of RAM. Most workstations have 8 gigabytes natively, and I feel like that would kind of affect it. But for $90 a month, I don't know how I feel about this. Um... I just want to take a look at Microsoft's Windows 365 pricing. Um, I'm not entirely sure how that compares to V2 Cloud. Even for premium, I feel like Windows 365 is definitely the better way to go. But V2 Cloud is still a very cool service. Um, like I said earlier, V2 Cloud was generous enough to reach out and offer me this account that I can mess with and have fun with. So I'd like to thank them for doing that. Use my referral code in the description if you'd like to take a look at V2 Cloud. Now there is one other thing that I want to say about cloud PCs being the future. Cloud PCs don't actually have to be full-on Windows servers. In fact, there is a service that 
is mainly used more for works for workstation use or business use and education use and it is this service right here so what this does is it literally opens up a regular window and it says what application would you like to launch it is a website that asks you that and all you have to do is go ahead and click on the application that your administrator has installed so let's say photoshop and it launches photoshop in a secured windows server environment you can't access the start menu you can't shut the server down you can't do anything you only get the photoshop windows even the explorer is disabled and when you go to save anything it doesn't save to the local c drive it saves to your google drive this is an example of cloud computing which I really think is a very cool concept that could eventually evolve into something, especially with services like this. Cloud computing is probably the future, whether you like it or not. With many things moving to Azure, we're moving to the cloud more and more as time moves on. Whether we like it or not, whether we trust its security or not, we are moving more cloud-based as a society. And that, that can be scary. But judging by how well V2 Cloud runs, I would use this. I think that I might be I might consider using this if I needed a cloud-based operating system because this is really cool. With that being said, cloud PCs are definitely the future. I believe that V2 Cloud is a very cool service that can show the future of cloud computing. However, other companies need to jump on board. With that being said, if you like this video, definitely like like it and let me know down in the below what you think about cloud computing. Is it worth it? How are you going to use it, if at all? Drop a like and subscribe if you're new around here, as I do all kinds of different technology videos, including device restorations. And with that being said, I'll see you all in the next one.